the first sign of life is the speaking. When they deliver the baby in the delivery room, the doctor looks for sound. He spanks the baby. Checks. They're trying to find that cry. I've got to tell you, you need to remind the devil that you're still alive. And you need to allow that cry, that voice to come out and let him know that he lost one more time. That he lost it one more time. Because you still have breath. And you still have a shout. And you're not going to stop giving God the victory. You might be battered. You might be bruised. You might be wounded. But you're here today. And that's evident that the enemy has still balls. Because it don't matter how messed up you are when you get in his presence. Jesus. Just the mention of his name. The mention of his name. When his name is mentioned in heaven, angels fall and worship you. The name that is above every name, the name that is higher than your situation, it's higher than your affliction, it's higher than your circumstance. When the name is mentioned, all hell trembles with fear when that name is mentioned. Darkness has to leave when that name is mentioned. Light shows up when that name is mentioned. yesterday being open and they sang about heaven coming to earth that you would take me there God they sang to that place and so this morning the Holy Spirit in my hotel room had spoke to me and directed me to this scripture in Revelation 4 and after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Come on. And the first voice which I heard were as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up. There's a door opened in this place. And the Spirit of God is saying to you, come up in through that door. God is welcoming you into his presence. John said, then immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on that throne. There's only room for one person on that throne. And he that sat on it was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Blinded. With blinding light. There was a rainbow round about that throne. You see, God surrounds himself with the rainbow. The symbol of his covenant to man. God is forever on his throne. Reminded of the covenant he has made with you. That's why he can't forget. Come on. That door is open for you to come through into his presence before his throne. Through that open portal that's available to you into his throne room. And when you come into that throne room, watch the bondage vanish. Watch 
The poverty leave. Watch the sickness go. Watch the hopelessness disappear. Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. There is no lack in his presence. Come through that portal. I know you didn't plan to sing that song. But I feel like the Holy Spirit wants us to sing that one more time. To take us into that place. God has something for you to come in. I'm telling you right now, if you enter through that portal with your worship, if you enter through there with that worship, God will show up on your behalf. Yeah. Enter in through that portal. Step into that door and watch it. Put your life back together. Watch it touch you at the midst of your point through that portal. Because when you get in His presence, nothing else matters. Nothing else is important in His presence. Nothing is more important than worship.
here in that moment when you enter into his presence. God, Jesus. Won't you get to the place where nothing else matters but him? Nothing else matters but Jesus. In his presence, your need doesn't even matter. Ah, come on, Jesus. I feel the anointing of God in here. Yes, God. Today, I don't know what some of you experienced yesterday, but today, God, has a change coming in your life. with a Spongebob blanket. Because okay. somebody put this baby boy's blanket, I assume it's for a boy, on this altar for a reason. God told me to pick it up. I don't know who it's for. They're going to get their miracle. Yeah, who put this Lord. up here? Who put this blanket up here? Who's it for? said they had a baby with a bad kidney. Not for long. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all clapping like you're not sure you believe that. You don't have to believe it. Not for long. I can tell you about tumors disappearing from bodies. I can tell you about blind eyes opening. I can tell you about doctors having to reorder blood tests. Yes, I can Lord. tell you about that yes, stuff Lord. because my God 
is still on the throne. Yeah. Come on. Joshua chapter number 5. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was there any more spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. I don't know about you, but the enemy had been assailed against Israel on the other side of Jordan. And God had delivered them across the river. The Bible says that God had split the river and they walked through the midst of that river. And here in verse number one, we read the story how the enemies of Israel had heard what God had done and fear had gripped their heart. Let me tell you that you may be outnumbered, that you may be outgunned, but the enemy has heard the testimony of your God and his feet tremble with fear at the report of God. Come on. Said that the enemy was so worried and sin with fear that their hearts were spoken. These were the fear giants of King. These were the many armies of the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Amalekites, the mighty giants that had inhabited this land. They had heard the report of God. And his people were now about to cross through. And the Bible said that they had no more spirit in them. Oh, come on. Not like the other translation that says it took their breath away. Come on. Let me tell you that the enemy may look bad, yeah. may look hard, he may look tough. But right now he lost his breath because you're here. He's lost his will to fight because you're here. And right now one knee is fighting against the other. Worry that you're about to come in contact with the anointing of God that destroys every yoke against which he cannot contend. The Bible says that they had lost their will to fight. The first Gulf War. When the United States had routed Saddam Hussein's army and pushed them out of Kuwait. So many had been slain, had been crushed beneath the power and the might of the American military force that an unmanned helicopter could fly over thousands of Iraqi soldiers and they would surrender to an unarmed transport helicopter. Oh, come on. Thousands of, at that time, the third largest army on the face of the planet, they were surrendering to news reporters by the thousands. Because they were looking for somebody to spare them. What was coming then? Let me tell you that right now the enemy's about to give up and leave your life because he's just hoping he can get spared the right arm of Jehovah God that will be swift to come against everything that has been set up in your life. You need to understand the God that you serve. He's not so emaciated. Sandal wearing hippie God. Come on, come on, come on now. <laughs> John said, I saw Hallelujah. a white horse, and he that sat upon him was faithful and true, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. He had a name upon him that no man knew, save he himself. His name was the Word of God. He was wearing a vesture that had been dipped in blood. And out of his mouth proceeded a two-edged sword within which he would smite ah, the nations. Come on. Want to find out who Jesus is? 
spend some time in Revelation. Yeah. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Get your face out of a humanistic gospel and get it in Revelation. Find out who he is. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Almighty. Your adversary understands that. And so they had heard the report of Israel. I've walked in a room before. Sit with just a few words. And watch people fall on the ground. Demons rolling around. Because when you carry the presence of God. You can enter a room and make the devil nervous. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Right. Their hearts were melted. There was no more will to fight because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel. The second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males. Even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way after they had come out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt. Them and they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Yes. Verse 9, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you, wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, at even in the plain of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after Passover, the unleavened cakes, parched corn of the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. God had brought Israel to the edge of the promise. Now was the time for the generation to cross through and possess the inheritance that God had placed for them. There were giants in the land The report had come back It was 40 years prior to this That the original generation That had come from Egypt Had sent spies into the land To find out To scout out ahead of the, of the plot To scout it out And to find out what was on the other side What exactly they were facing It was 40 years prior to this But they had come back And just a bad report from a small few. So discord and fear into the heart of an entire generation that thwarted them from inheriting the promise of God. You need to be careful to who you listen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But doubt also comes by hearing. You have to watch who you listen to. You have to watch what you put on the inside of you. What you allow to feed your spirit. And so their unbelief and their fear caused an entire generation from moving into that land. Because they had been worried of a giant. But you see, you have to understand that giants are not a threat to you. Not to the people of God, a giant. Yeah, yeah. Right. The presence of giant in your life yes. is not a blockage to your miracle. 
giants in the land of promise are but a mere insurance policy that only the people of faith possess a promise. Giants are there to make sure those that don't have faith are scared off. Because only those of faith are entitled to possess promise. That was God's insurance policy that no one else but the people of faith moved in that land. And so it was now a generation that had been called. It was their time. Tell your neighbor, it's my time. My time. No, it's my time. Tell them like you mean it. It's my time. My time. It's my time. It's my time. It was their time. And it was about their time to move into that land. But God had ordered that they had to be circumcised. Israel had been circumcised previously. But that generation had died in the wilderness. And there was now left another generation that were uncircumcised. You see, there had to be a cutting away Come on. of the flesh before they could possess the promise. Let me tell you that you cannot possess the promise of God with flesh in your life. Amen. There was an entire generation that had arisen that had not yet been circumcised. And we today have an entire generation that has not been circumcised. You can preach on holiness and they'll walk out the room. But without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I know it might sell books. It might fill your church building. But holiness is a requirement of a holy God. He didn't ask you to be holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. Well, it's just so hard to live right. No, it's not. Come on. It's not hard to live right. It's hard to live wrong. You got to plan this thing. Come on. The problem is you've got too much flesh in the way uh, of your heart. You've got, there has to be a cutting away there. In, an, in order for you to possess the promise, there has to be that cutting. Circumcision had to be done in order for them to possess the promise. This generation had grown up without that in their life. We need a generation that needs to go under the knife of the Holy Spirit and have that flesh cut away and understand that a sanctified life is still a requirement of God. Yeah, come on. It's still a requirement of God. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice. Amen. Present yourself. Not God present you. You present yourself right. a living sacrifice Amen. that is holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable Amen. service. In other words, it's the least you can do. Yes. The least you can do is live. God. God. The least you can do. How come we don't hear that anymore? Come on. We are on the edge. There's a change coming to the body of Christ. There is a change coming to your life. Yes. Christians for so long have been so settled to eat manna every day. God never intended for them to eat manna forever. God give me manna. God says, I've been trying to give you fruit. We got to come off of the milk nah, come on, and get on the meat. That's right. The children of Israel were given manna only to sustain them through the wilderness because they were supposed to move into promise. 
You need to get off of manna and understand that God has called you to inherit the promise and to live off the fruit of the land. Get out of whack. Get out of just getting by. Get out of church as usual. Get out of everything the way it seems to always be. You've got to understand that there's more coming. And on that day, Israel began to eat the corn of the land. And it was then at that moment that the Bible says the manna ceased. And Israel did eat of the fruit of the land in that year. There's a change coming to your life. There's a change coming. Some of you about to come off of manna. Some of you are about to move in to the fruit of the land. The manna's been great for a time, but it's time now for you to move past the manna and into the glory. Past the manna and into the anointing. Past the manna and into the presence and the provision and the promise of God. Before that could happen, there has to be a cutting. Sometimes things got to hurt before they feel better. Not long after I got out of the military, I used to get ingrown toenails all the time. I would go for months with them until my toe would fester, would get so sore and infected. And in order for it to be healed properly, it had to be cut out. Yeah, that's right. You just can't get given an antibiotic. You've got to cut that thing that's digging in your skin out. Yeah. Because it has formed a scar line. It has formed a groove. And that nail begins to grow along that scar line down into your body. And until it's cut out, it will continue to grow along the path. Let me tell you that you have allowed for too long a scar line to exist in your life. And those things that need to be rooted out and pulled down need to be extracted from your life. Yes. Yeah. Come on. But we got too much candy preaching. Uh, come on. Just want to give everybody a band-aid and an antibiotic. But there has to be something rooted out. The anointing of the prophet will root out and destroy, will pull down so that God can build it. Come on. Sometimes it's going to hurt folks. And it doesn't feel good when he digs around in there. Finally pulls that thing out. This morning, there's a root system in many of your lives that needs to be extracted. There's a root system of unforgiveness. There's a root system of greed. There's a root system of doubt. There's a, a root system of worry. There's a root system of transgression that needs to be extracted. Has to be pulled out. They say, well, that's just hard preaching. Come on. It's the only thing that's going to save you. Come on. Because if you don't pull it out, the antibiotic will help for a short time. And it's always going to come back again. You want to know why? You keep going through that revolving door, round and round and over. You do good for so long and back around again because you have not had a root extracted. Ah, Amen. Yes. Amen. The Bible says that every tree not planted by my father shall be uprooted. Amen. This morning is an uprooting season in your life. There are going to be some things uprooted from your life because God loves you and wants you to inherit the promise. And until it's uprooted and pulled out, it might feel bad, it might hurt, but eventually it's going to be exactly what you need. It's going to allow you to heal. It's going to allow you to move in the promise. Because only a people of the circumcision can inherit the promise. God has so much for you. Amen. But until you Amen. have this cutting away, Amen. there are 
are those that are satisfied with man. There are those that are satisfied with 60 minute services. In and out by 12.30 on Sunday. Come on now. If you plan on making it home for the game, you're probably in trouble today. That's right. Because I'll preach till God says it's time. Amen. And I don't care what plans you have. Come on. Pastor, don't you think it's time that preachers stop caring what people think? And start worrying about what God thinks. I didn't have to check with denominational headquarters before I preached this message. I didn't have to ask my wife. I didn't have to ask the deacon board. sugar-free gospel out of your life. We were kids, we made Kool-Aid. We didn't buy the sugar-free stuff. And some of them will put sugar on top of the regular Kool-Aid. It already has sugar in the back. Of it. Everybody today's on a diet. Everybody today wants to cut stuff out. Everybody today's trying to get thin, but God is trying to put me on your bone. We want to cut out holiness. We want to cut out sanctification. Come on. We want to cut out the Holy Ghost in tongues. We want to cut out the power of God. We want to just sterilize it and keep it nice and keep it cute and keep it short Come and on. keep it happy and keep everybody coming and keep the money coming and keep everybody dancing and everybody shouting and make everything look great and feel nice. But God wants to cut it out of your life. That's the reason. Yes. I'll never forget the day my phone rang. A family member had called me to come and pray for her nephew. She said, Chad, would you come and pray for him? He had overdosed on heroin. So I got dressed. I went to the hospital. And when I had walked through those doors through the emergency room, that side consultation room was packed full of family members. And I had gotten there just as the doctor had come in and gave that mother the news that no mother ever wants to hear, that her boy was dead on arrival. I listened as she cried out, no, not my boy. And then she looked at her emaciated so-called pastor and begged him to pray. And he offered up a prayer as if he wasn't even sure God still healed. Ah, come on. The Lord spoke to me and said, this lies at the foot of my church. You see, that young man had struggled with heroin. He came to the only place he knew to come. He came to, to the house of God. And they, would, they had no answer but to send him to a program. And they sent him to a program. And he'd do so good for so long. And like a revolving door back around and back around and back out again. And through another program and back around and back around and back back out again until finally he was making eggs with his 13 year old boy one morning he excused himself to go to the bathroom and to put a balloon in his arm the 13 year old boy was wondering why his daddy didn't come out of the bathroom after all he left the skillet on the stove with burner on he knocks on the door daddy are you going to come out no answer Finally, the 13-year-old pushes his way in the door as his father's dead body lying across the cold floor had to shove it out of the way to get in. And that young man had come looking for deliverance, but a powerless church. You see, you've got to understand that a powerless pulpit produces a powerless pew, and a powerless pew will produce a powerless church and a powerless church will always produce a messed up city. Messed up city produce powerless states, and powerless states produce apostate nations. Come on. 
We don't have a sin problem in America. We've got a preacher problem. Ha, come on, Jesus. God told me this lies at the foot of my church and I promised God that when I preach, I'll tell every addict that he can be delivered. He can be set free from that devil of drug addiction. You want to know how you cure drug addiction? Two words. Come out. in a church not unlike this one attached to the side of a bar one night a drunken man intoxicated comes stumbling in the doors in the middle of his intoxication he thought he had found the bar beside the church but he walked in the wrong bar that day because Jesus was serving a different one Come on. and I said sir what can God do for you he said, I want to be free from drugs and alcohol with tears streaming down that old man's face. Hallelujah. I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul devil of addiction, come out of him. Yes. The power of God hit him, threw him back into that seat. He began to convulse under the power of God. And in an instant, his intoxicated eyes were clear. Yes. The anointing of God can drive addiction from your life. It can drive perversion from your life. It can set you free. And it's time that the church start preaching the gospel once again. Come on. It's time that there's a cutting away. Because God wants you to move into this promise. And in order to do that, you can't get in there the way you are. We need to come off of this man of stuff and get into the land of fruit. The reproach of your life is rolled back through circumcision. Through the cutting away of the flesh. We have to present ourselves before the knife of the Holy Spirit and ask Him to cut it out. Cut that gossip out that you call prayer requests. Cut that Worrying out, cut that flesh out, cut that backbiting and murmuring out. Right. <coughs> the pastor don't have to consult with you. He needs to consult with God. Amen. You better stop that backbiting. it out. God's going to cut pornography out. God's going to cut. And if you don't think women have that problem, you live in a dream world. Cut it out. This morning, God's going to cut it out of your life those things that have attached themselves to you it's going to cut it off so that you can move into that promise so that you can move into that area you see the enemy is more afraid of you than you need to be of him. Amen. He had heard Israel was coming and was fearful. 
That's the reason that you've had so much warfare in your life. The indicator of warfare in your life is evidence that the devil is nervous about what God intends to do in your situation. It's a manifestation of worry on behalf of the enemy. Yeah. Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Right. The church was not intended to be attacked. The church was intended to be doing the attacking. And hell would not be able to stop the onslaught of the advancement of God's church. Yes. And I hear God say there's a change coming. Come on. Amen. There's a change coming to your life. God only cuts it out so that he can fill you with something better. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. You can't plant a crop unless you till the land. Right. Hallelujah. Come on. You can try. But that land needs to be tore up. Yeah. It needs to be tilled. Yeah. It needs to be ripped up so that it can get to that fertile soil and the seed can be planted. I'm telling you this morning that God is tilling the fertile soil of your heart by his spirit and is going to plant something in your life that he will bless people in and through you. If you allow that to happen. This is your season of promise. This is your season of possession. Come on. To possess the promise of God on your life. Right. To leave it behind. To leave yesterday behind. God puts your face on the front because you're not supposed to be looking back anymore. Right. Y'all need to quit looking back. No man is fit for the kingdom that puts his hand to the plow and looks back. Oh my God. Quit looking back at the way it used to be. Quit looking back at the way things were. Quit looking back at what was yesterday. Quit looking back at, at the way the way you used to mess up, the way it used to be set up in your life. Quit looking back at that and go forward and to the things and the plan of God that he has for you. In order for this covenant to be renewed, you've got to have... See, the covenant of circumcision was an indicator of the relationship of God. You need to have a relationship with him. My God. Amen. I didn't ask you if you knew who he was. But you need to have... God's not a two-dollar hooker looking to lay himself down with the casual inquirer. Oh, my God. Come on, man. He demands a relationship. Jeez. Yes. Y'all need to quit treating him like that. Uh, come on. Yeah. He demands a relationship. Man, if you'll learn that and get in that relationship, that's right. Man. He knows how to treat his bride. Come on. Come on. Yes, that's right. Jesus is coming back. I know they don't preach it anymore. I know they don't talk about the rapture of the church anymore. They say that's escape theology. Nah, come on. No, sir. The rapture of the church is not escape theology. Amen. I'm not hiding behind a pew somewhere waiting for Jesus to come. I'm putting my hand on the plow looking to see how many souls can be rescued before Jesus comes. Because there's still work to be done in the kingdom. You want to know what escape theology is? He's the judge of the living and the dead. You want to escape eternal judgment? You better find yourself at the blooded bottom of a cross. Because he still presses down the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God.
But Jesus is coming for a church that is spotless and without wrinkle. He's not looking for a church that smells like another man's cologne. Amen. My God. Amen. Come on. He's not looking for a church that's going to change their clothes, throw them in the washing machine before the wife gets home. Amen. Jesus. He's a holy God. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy. Jesus. Is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Holiness in your life. Yes. Holiness in your marriage. Yes. Holiness in your bedroom. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. People use that as a justification for anything inside the marriage room. But unholiness does not belong in there either. Hallelujah. That scripture means marriage is honorable in all and its bed is undefiled. What it means is the union between a man and a woman right. is undefiled. Right. Amen. God demands holiness Amen. in every area of your life. Amen. In your mind. In your words. In your deeds. And you only get that through a surrendered life with him. Through your willingness to obey. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Temptation is not a test of your willpower. Temptation is a test of your relationship. Temptation is a test of your relationship with God. Because if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. You don't keep his commandments because you don't love him. Because if you loved him, James said a man is not tempted. So when a man is tempted, he is Led away, drawn away by what? The desires of his heart. You can't get tempted with something you don't already desire. You can't tempt me to eat broccoli. Because I can't stand it. But if you're able to be tempted by something, it means there's an area of your life that there's a desire that needs to be rooted out. It needs to be rooted out. Oh, well, Jesus was tempted. That word in the Greek is tested. Come on. It means to be purified as gold. Looking for impurities. When gold is purified, it's heated up and the dross rises to the surface. What the Bible says is Jesus was tested. The devil was looking for a desire, but he found none. Yes, Jesus was tried. He was tempted, yet without sin. He was searched through, sifted through, but found to be pure. You need to have that sifting done. Uh, come on. So that that pureness can come. There's a purging in this place today. God wants to purify your heart. He wants to purify your life. He wants to purify your mind. And it's because he wants to move you into promise. He wants to move you into promise. And this cutting has got to happen. How many of you are ready to move from manna to fruit? Oh. Yeah. 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 You know, it often hurts in physical therapy before it heals. 
And right now, some of you may feel pain in your spirit. And the modern church has been taught to reject spiritual pain. They say, oh, that's condemnation. That's conviction. No, sir. Pain to your spirit is what pain is to your body. Pain to your body is an indication that something's wrong. Pain to your spirit is an indication that something is wrong. That's what the convicting power of the Holy Spirit is for. I'm not talking about condemnation. The devil condemns you, but the Spirit of God will convict you to real, let you realize that something is wrong so that you can be drawn to him for extraction. And so reprobate heart that no longer feels the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. And if you ever get to the place that you can live the way you want and never feel convicted, that's a fearful place to be. That's right. But the convicting power of the Spirit of God is the evidence of God's love. Of his drawing you. Because if you placed your hand on a stove and you didn't have pain in your body. And your body wasn't told by your nervous system to pull the hand off of that stove. It would burn your entire hand up. It would destroy the flesh kill you. Pain tells you take your hand off the stove. Amen. Today, God's going to cut it away. Cut it away in our life. He's going to move because Canaan is a land that flows with milk and honey. God's got so much more for you. Yes. He's got so much more for your life. Yes. So much more for this church. Stand with me, please. You see, when I moved into my home, I became obsessed with my lawn. When we first moved into our house, my wife's not here, but she can attest to this. I was obsessed with my lawn. I had to have the greenest lawn in the neighborhood. Because I was on a well, I would water my grass for hours in the morning, hours at night. I'd get up in the morning and I'd water it two hours and in the evening when it was cool I would water it I would fertilize it but when I first moved in it wasn't like that it was rocky it was nasty there were weeds everywhere crabgrass I don't know if you have that here in Texas but it was everywhere now you could do crabgrass the lazy way which is what most of the church does. They just mow over it. Come on. And it'll look good for a couple days till it grows back. And it will come back. Yeah. In order to deal with crabgrass and weeds, you have to treat the root. It has to be uprooted. You need to treat that root system yeah. so that the root dies. Oh, Jesus. So I began to treat it. I watched it start to disappear. Next thing I knew, my whole lawn in the front and the side was full of grass and was lush. Deliverance will pull and treat the root system 
of your life. We'll treat the root system. In this place this morning, God, Jesus. some of you have got a, a root system in your life. And it looks good for so long, but you're tired of those weeds choking it out. This, eve, this morning, God is going to treat that system in your life. Won't you let him do it? Every head bowed, every eye closed in this house this morning. If I'm speaking to you in this place. And there's a root system in your life that you know needs to be rooted out. I want you to come to this altar because God is going to pull it out. He's going to move in your circumstance. He'll pull that root system of fear out. He'll pull that root system of worry out. He'll pull that addiction out. That root system of anger. Whatever it may be. If you're in this place, you're not saved. You don't know Jesus. You don't have a relationship with Him. On, don't walk out of this place without getting right with God uh, and coming yes, into relationship God. with oh, Jesus no, Christ. No, 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 no. So this call at the altar is for two people. It's for the person who does not know Jesus and is unsaved. And you know that if you walk out of this place and should your life leave this earth, you're as sure for hell as if you were already there. Yes. But you can change oh. that today and walk out of here with eternal life. So this altar call is for that person and it is also for the Christian who has a root system in their life that is choking out things. They're still living on manna, but God wants to move you into fruit. Yeah, come on, God. He wants to pull that yes, out God. of your life. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you are in here with a root system that's been in place for familial generations. Your daddy was this way, so you'll always be that way. Your mother was this way. That's just how I am. I'm just hot-headed and full of anger because it's my ethnicity. No, it's not. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Oh, go shut For years, my wife. Hallelujah. She's Italian. That would be the excuse to act in the way they would act till she got saved oh. and filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't blame it on your ethnicity. Well, I'm Scottish, so I like to drink. I'm Hispanic or Italian, so I'm just a little hot-headed. Right. Don't let the enemy identify you. Today, that root system where the enemy has labeled you and your family for generations is going to be uprooted God, and treat. pulled out of your life. Come on, God. You're not who they say you are. Yes. You're who God says That's you right. are. Jesus. Yes. Come on. The knife of the Holy Spirit in this place is moving. Is moving. Is moving. Is moving right now. In the name of Jesus, those that have come, I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to pray with me right now. I want you to pray out loud with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you now. I ask you to cut every root out of my life. Cut every root out of my life that does not belong. Let every root of sin be extracted. Let every root of addiction be extracted. Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender my will to you. I surrender my life to you. Yes, God. I surrender my heart to you. 
I repent of my sin. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. And I shall be clean. Pull it out of my life, Lord. Pull it out of my life, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. I speak to every root now. I speak to every root now. In the name of Jesus, it comes out. It comes out. In the name of Jesus. I, I speak now to every identity in your life, every label that's been placed on you from a past, from a family line. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pull every root out of you by the anointing of God. Devil, you can't hold him. You can't have him. I lose him.
The only thing behind you is wilderness. Ahead of you is promise. Make the purpose that you're going to serve Jesus, that you're going to press on into Him. God's cutting it out right now, out of your life. Out of your life at this altar. Right there where you stand. I rebuke generational curses, familiar spirits that have visited you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break its power. I lose you from night terrors in the name of Jesus. Right now, this is a holy moment in your life. This is a holy moment in your life where you present your heart to Him to be circumcised. That it gets the flesh is cut away. This is a holy moment. That's His sign of covenant in your life. There's a wave coming now. Oh, Jesus. There's a wave of... 
of refreshing now coming. And now that the cutting has happened, there's a wave of refreshing coming. 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 There's a wave of refreshing. Yes, God. Lift up your hands Holy right God. now. And be refreshed. Oh, be Jesus. refreshed. Be refreshed by the presence of the Lord. Oh! <laughs> 